Creating assets for Dota 2 can be pretty technical, so setting up a smart process early on can help us turn it to easy mode. In order to get a strong workflow from Substance Painter in Dota 2, it's important that we know what each file contributes to the process. The max material IDs will save your final asset name, as well as define Substance Painter texture set groups. We'll name our 3D Studio Max low poly meshes in order to match our ZBrush high poly OBJ exports. Finding matches will create render groups that will render separately independent of whether or not they're overlapping. Dragon Shield and Dragon Sword will be my final file names. So all of the naming for my high polys, my low polys, my materials, and my final assets are gonna jump off that. Substance Painter requires a underscore high or underscore low to define whether or not it's a low poly object or a high poly object. On this model, I have two meshes, which will have their own material sets. Each one will have its own set of textures. But inside of one of these models, I have something that I wanna have two different render groups. You can see I've taken this low poly arm brace here, and it's just intersecting into the shield because of our poly budgets. With this, I want this to be a separate render group. And the way you define render groups, like anything before the, the suffix, the suffix being underscore low or underscore high. So in this case, I have dragon shield underscore low. That's defining one render group. When I select the handle, you'll see I have dragon shield handle underscore low. So what it's gonna do is go look for high poly objects and we'll know they're high poly objects because of the naming so we'll have a dragon shield handle underscore high that will match with this, at least one object. That's all we need. So you'll see for my sword, I'll have dragon, dragon sword low, which will match with dragon sword high. It's really important to know that it's simple to match objects. It's very easy. It just looks for that first string. Everything before the suffix of underscore low or underscore high is matched. Anything after that underscore high or underscore low is going to be thrown out. Material names become very important when you get to rendering in substance. What will end up happening is that we can create with smart naming final textures based specifically on whether or not we named our material well. Where, whatever my final asset name is for each of the parts is going to be the name of my material. So in this case, I've got dragon sword, dragon underscore sword. Put that on my, on my sword. And I've got dragon underscore shield. I'll put that in the shield and on the bracket. Now, model names define render groups. Material names define texture sets. So I'm going to export selected as an FBX. I'm going to export. I'm only going to have smoothing groups on, everything else off. I'm going to say, okay. Now that we've exported it, we can open it up in Substance and just verify that we've got the naming correct. So we're going to go File, New. We're going to select a mesh. And we're going to find that model, Dragon Sword Low. I'm going to define the resolution of all my textures right here by just changing this. The rest of this should all be default. You, you will want to set uh, to so much Dota. Um, this is going to import a few different things. It's going to set some shader parameters and lighting information. So you'll see if we look at this, you'll find the texture set list here. Texture sets say Dragon Shield, Dragon Sword. Those are going to be our final texture names as well. Now that we have our file tested, we're going to jump over to ZBrush. We're going to do two very important things in ZBrush. One, we're going to make sure our naming is such that we'll be able to define what these are when we look at them in a, in a file browser. We're also going to make these files in ZBrush agnostic to the final assets. So you'll see right here, I've got a gold handle, which is clearly the, the gold parts of the handle, gold filler. I'm not trying to be totally explicit. When we export, Subtool Master really wants to name it something. We'll be exporting and we'll add the prefix that's going to make it match with our low poly. So we'll add for our sword, we'll add dragon underscore sword underscore high underscore, and then it'll fill in the rest of these. And remember everything after that name gets thrown out anyway. So we're just saying, hey, match all these things, please match all these things. Before we export though, there's one very, 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 very important thing to do, which is to go into every subtool, and I swear to you, it's every subtool. Just know that you have to do this on every object and go down to export in every subtool and turn off export with groups. See this? This is going to mess up the file naming and it won't allow ZBrush 
and substance to communicate what the actual material matches are. If we turn this off though, it will default to using the OBJ name that we export. And that's what we really want. We want to make sure that we have our OBJ exporting with information that we can use to get auto matching and we can just dump all the, all the objects in one folder. One other thing to note is that I've gone through and I've set up poly paint on both my shield and my sword that matches. This will be useful later when we try and build materials on one and just quickly port them to the other. So you can see I'm using the same gold, the same red, the same turquoise on this object. Other than that, turn off group and then go through Z plugin, sub tool master. We're going to leave all these off and say OBJ format. Sounds great. Say OK. We're going to find the folder, high poly. We're going to say dragon sword underscore high underscore. And that's going to be the prefix for the whole thing. And this is what's going to make it all match. We're going to match everything to this. We'll hit save. It's going to go through the process of exporting all these OBJs. Now that we've exported the sword, let's go jump over to the shield, do the same exact thing. Make sure we go off group on every sub tool. It's important to note, this does not save per session. When you reload your Z tool, group will be checked again. So you'll have to do this every time you export. Now that we've turned off all the, the group export options, we're going to go back to sub tool, master and export, say okay. We're gonna change this to dragon shield underscore high underscore, which will then give me the final subtool name at the end of this. This is just a beginning prefix. So we've exported out our shield base. Now we need to export out the second render group for our shield. Second render group for our shield is just these two objects in the back. There's two objects here. If you look at this, there's the handle. These are the ones that are intersecting the, the geometry. We want them to bake separately because they're just a poly strip. So we're going to turn off everything but these two. Again, making sure that we export with uh, poly groups off, or sorry, groups off. We're going to go to Subtool Master, export all options off. Okay, and we're going to say Dragon Shield Handle in this case, underscore high underscore. Let's jump back over to Substance. We'll go to Texture Set Setting, and we'll go straight to Bake Textures. Now, what's important to know, there's one common group, the yellow one on top here. This is the base output sizes and dilation and all those things for everything. I'm going to set this to 1024 by 1024. My dilation width of eight, which is the, how many pixels we creep out from our render. You see high definition meshes and a little new button. Let's pop that on. High poly, OBJ. We're going to grab all of our assets here. Now I've already rendered this once, so it's created the .aspbin files, and those are basically the analyzed versions of the OBJs. But know that the first time you render, it's gonna create a bunch of files in your hard drive. We're gonna increase the max frontal distance to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This is all relative to the size of your mesh. I'm gonna turn on match by mesh name. This is gonna tell me, hey, when I match by mesh name, render together. Do not render over any of those seams. I'm gonna turn off anti-aliasing because these textures are gonna be 256 by 256 in the end. It'd be a little easier for me to get clean material masking from this. Leave the high poly mesh suffix and low poly mesh suffix alone. The one other option I change when I do my first bakes especially is I go to the ID maps and I go double check that our color source is from vertex color. And we're going to just say bake all texture sets. And this is really how simple it can be. With our bakes done, we can quick investigate each object. On the back of our model, we can see the strap which was rendered separate from the body even though it's intersecting it's not actually showing up on the mesh for the shield itself so you can see here's that piece right there and here's the strap right here and you can see you've got no overcast so that's rendered those both separately and given us a good result so remember your material ids define your substance texture sets your texture sets define your final asset name and your OBJs and low poly meshes define render matches. So there's easy mode rendering. Our next video will cover exporting from Substance and importing our assets automatically into Dota.